much of the discussion at the moment seems to be around technological uh, changes, with the implication being that advances in artificial intelligence and robotics and other fields uh, are really going to change the kind of work uh, that, that we do and potentially put a lot of um, people out of work. Um, but there are a lot of other forces uh, that we need to be thinking about, and some of those are demographic. And because they're demographic forces, they take place over a longer period of time, so they've been more invisible uh, to people. Uh, so one that's very important, particularly in developed economies, uh, is the population is aging. And a smaller proportion of uh, the population is of working age, and the participation rate uh, is declining. Um, another factor that we often don't think about is the movement in a number of large populous countries like China, India, Russia, towards more open markets. And because of that, there are literally hundreds of millions of new people uh, competing in a global labor market. If you combine those two things, you think about a number of developing countries that are opening their doors and relying on immigration uh, to fill some of their labor market, which is creating a much more diverse uh, workforce than we would have had previously. And then, of course, on top of that, we have all of the disruption that arises from different uh, digital platforms, uh, the ability to create social networks that truly span the globe, uh, the ability to work from any, uh, from any location, uh, and that's really having an impact on the kinds of jobs that people do. It's fragmenting markets, it's taking jobs and sort of breaking them up into smaller pieces. So um, there are a number of forces that are changing the nature of work, uh, and many of these are technological in orientation, but a lot of them aren't as well. So the result of all of this is nearly a perfect storm for today's graduate. Uh, you have a number of fields where there are jobs wanting and no people to fill them. Uh, in other fields, you have recent graduates who are employed, but they aren't using their full skill set. Uh, and we also have a number of people who are truly frightened because they are employed, but they see an end to the kind of career that they're currently in and that um, they need to move on to something else and they don't know how to do it. So the primary issue is how to better prepare young people for jobs that don't yet exist and that we don't even know what those jobs will be, but also to prepare people who are currently in employment to make a shift into the new kinds of jobs that will exist as well. And that's often portrayed as being an issue of training, but I think it's much more than that. So I think this uh, means that we also need to think about how to restructure education. Uh, for example, traditionally within universities, knowledge is usually thought of in terms of disciplines. And it's quite clear that uh, in the new economy, knowledge isn't going to be the source of competitive advantage. There are a number of fundamental skills uh, that are important, and these cut across traditional disciplines. So at the School of Business, we've already realized that this is an issue, and we're beginning to change the way that we teach our students. So we're moving away from traditional lecture-based classrooms and towards opportunities to provide students with more real-world experience, to work in teams, and to experience the kinds of workplace environments uh, that they are likely to encounter in the future. A good example uh, is our Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, which has recently opened the Unleash Space. Uh, the Unleash Space incorporates both a maker space where students can uh, interact with technology and equipment, uh, work in teams, try out ideas, build prototypes, uh, but also a more general activity space uh, where they can engage with businesses and with others uh, on projects related to um, entrepreneurial kinds of activities. To future-proof themselves, I think that individuals have to change the way that they think. They need to stop thinking about job-specific skills and rather start thinking about the core fundamental foundational skills that help them deal with change. People should focus on becoming more resilient, on becoming more adaptive. And by deepening their understanding of a few foundational skills, they'll probably find that it is much easier to pivot between careers that on the surface don't have a lot in common, uh, but underneath rely on a few basic skills that, will, um, that they can use in different ways throughout their lifetime. Paradoxically, the foundational skills that are most important 
are those that make us most human. They're things like emotional intelligence and our understanding of culture and our ability to collaborate and communicate with other people. In essence, the skills that machines can't take over. And the last thing I think we need to think about is we have to stop thinking about education as being something that's separate from our work life. Education is not something that we do until our early 20s and then we transition into work. Rather, education is something that is intertwined with work throughout our lifetime that helps us to continue to deepen our understanding of those foundational skills, but that also constantly gives us an overlay of new technical skills that help us to move between different jobs no matter what those may be.